This video is sponsored by Setup. WWDC 2025 unveiled Apple's first universal design language across all of its platforms, and it's called Liquid Glass. Inspired by Vision OS, Liquid Glass is layered throughout the system and features rounded corners that have been matched to the curved screens of the devices. It behaves just like glass in the real world, and it morphs when you need more options or moves between different views. I do want to preface that everything shown in this video, or at least the hands-on portions, are, are a developer beta, and so things might change in the future, so just wanted you to keep that in mind when you're watching this video. Now, on iOS, once you go hands-on for the first time, you'll immediately notice this new design language, and it's very prevalent on the lock screen. The glass look is just littered throughout, especially with the clock, which can be resized to be a lot larger than ever before. The notifications have a very translucent slash glass design, and the lock screen toggles have that shine to them. App icons have been redesigned with multiple layers of liquid glass, and if you tap into the customize mode here on your home screen, you'll see a new option for a clear look that sits alongside the light and dark modes. Control Center also features some pretty heavy liquid glass design here too. Now macOS also gets a lot of this liquid design throughout, which I'll talk about later in this video, but before we get into everything, I do want to give you some more information about today's sponsor, which is Setapp. Setapp is the ultimate place to get apps for your Mac, and even your iPhone. For one monthly subscription price, you get access to hundreds of apps, and these apps aren't just random applications that you wouldn't have any use for. In fact, a lot of these apps that I'm going to talk about here I use on a regular basis, and it might be pretty hard for me to live without them. Now, Paste is an absolutely fantastic clipboard manager. Even though Apple has finally implemented a clipboard manager into macOS, it's still not quite as powerful or as robust as Paste, which has nearly an unlimited amount of history for your you know, things that you copy and paste, and just about everything that you might copy across all of your de devices are easily stored in one uh, easy to use tray that I can also categorize or search for using keywords. I also use this daily alongside CleanShot, which is an excellent screenshot and screen recording app that takes your basic screenshots to another level with so many great features and tools for annotating, blurring, and editing. I've also been a recent user of Notch Nook for my MacBook Pro because, well, it just makes the notch on my MacBook so much more useful by acting as a place for more information at a quick glance, media controls, a tray for holding and sharing files, and so much more. There are so many great apps to choose from from here, and I highly recommend giving Setapp a try. So you can try Setapp with an extended 30-day trial by clicking the link down below or scanning the QR code on the screen. Thanks, Setapp, for sponsoring this video. Now, the redesign in iOS also carries across applications, navigation, widgets, and even the keyboard. The most notable apps with this design uh, that I've been checking out recently are apps like Messages, Mail, Safari, and the Camera app, and even the Photos app, too. The redesign makes everything very clean and minimal. You can minimize toolbars when you don't need them. Just by simply scrolling, it just ducks out of the way automatically, allows for maximum screen real estate. This is especially prevalent in larger screens like iPad OS, but still overall the glass theme is just littered throughout these apps and it just seems much cleaner too, especially with the keyboard. The camera app has been slimmed down quite a bit with only two options at the bottom. You have photo and video, but then the glass look really starts to pop here when swiping through the various options. If you swipe slowly, you can really see that glass effect in action. It's almost like a magnifying glass. You can swipe up to see more useful toggles like exposure, flash, styles, etc. And all of your video and photo formats are easily located at the top left corner. The Photos app has also been redesigned, as I mentioned before, but this time it also chooses a two-tab approach here. So you have your main All Photos feed, that's one tab, and then everything else is in the other tab that was in the bottom where you would just keep scrolling. So it's just nicely separated. Lastly, as I mentioned earlier, this design language carries across all platforms, and so I just wanted to take a quick minute to showcase that across macOS, watchOS, and tvOS. With macOS, widgets, the dock, and the app icons all have the same glass look that was found in iOS. Sidebars and toolbars will give more depth due to the transparency and visibility of the content behind it. It just makes you feel like you have more screen real estate at your disposal, as I mentioned earlier. This feeling also carries across the menu bar, which is now completely transparent, and even the control center offers users some nice, fresh liquid glass design with fully customizable controls at your fingertips. 
With watchOS, the new design is offering a revamped experience in the smart stack, the numbers on the photos face, control center, and of course in all of the navigation and the buttons that are littered throughout. And tvOS is kind of the same thing. Apple TV Plus has playback controls that refract the content underneath, control center still showcasing the video in the background when you're using the different toggles, so you can still watch things and it's just uninterrupted content, and the app icons carry that vibrant layered design and the new specular highlights that really showcase all of this new design detail that Apple has definitely put so much thought into. So that's Liquid Glass in a nutshell, just a quick hands-on. Of course, we're gonna have more videos diving deep into iOS, uh, iPadOS especially, macOS, all of the platforms that we talked about uh, that Apple you know, gave updates to at WWDC 2025. But I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of the new design. And then of course, let me know what features you want me to touch on in those videos. And just overall, what are your thoughts on WWDC? Let me know down in those comments. This has been Down With Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you around in the next video.